Hey guys, my name is E. I'm a professional sports videographer and all the footage you just saw was actually shot by my sister with an iPhone 11. And just to be clear, my sister is no videographer. She basically just puts her phone up every time her son's on the court and hopes for the best. So today I'm gonna show you how I turned her very basic iPhone footage into an epic hype reel. All right, so I'm gonna take you through the entire edit of the hype reel you just watched. This is what the laptop is for. I'm gonna explain every effect, every creative decision I made. But first of all, I wanna talk about the main differences between editing footage from a professional camera and footage from a phone. The first difference is that a lot of phones actually use variable frame rates instead of constant frame rates, and that causes a few issues. For example, let's say your frame rate is set to 30 frames per second on your phone. So what happens is that if you're shooting in quote unquote ideal conditions, so let's say great lighting and not too many details in your shot, a good sort of close up shot with not much movement going on, then in those conditions, the frame rate is actually gonna start going down because it doesn't need as many frames to give out the same level of quality. But if your shot starts getting darker or if there's more and more details in it, then the frame rate is gonna go right back up to 30. This is why when we look at the frame rate from my sister's footage, you can see some weird numbers there like uh, 30.01 and 34.99. In a nutshell, the purpose of a variable frame rate is to reduce the file size of your clips and also make the compression process easier on your phone, especially during longer recordings. So ultimately, it helps preserve battery life, uh, it preserves uh, storage on your phone, and it also helps avoid uh, potential issues like overheating, for example. But this all comes at the cost of adding extra processing needs in playback. Essentially, it's an extra drain on your system. So if you got an older computer, you could experience lagging or even a full computer crash when playing back phone footage, especially if you add extra effects to your video. And because the variable frame rate affects the video and not the audio, you always get some sort of sync issues at some point, if not during the edit, then during the export. All that to say that when editing phone footage, the first thing you wanna do is transcode all your clips using a video converter software. I personally use a media encoder from Adobe, but there are a bunch of others at a variety of prices. So what I typically do is convert all my files into high quality H.264 files or even ProRes files if I know I'm gonna use a lot of effects later. And of course, I make sure that the frame rate of each file is set to a constant frame rate, in this case, 30 frames per second or 29.97 to be exact. And once every file is transcoded, I'm ready to import all my new files into Premiere Pro and start editing. But before we get into that, I quickly want to mention the other big difference between phone footage and professional camera footage, which is obviously the image quality. As you saw previously in my edit, the image quality is not that great, but I still think that the intensity, the storytelling, the constant movement, and the sound design are all attention grabbing enough to make the viewer forget, or at the very least not care about the lack of image quality. This is why when I edit phone footage, I never hesitate to zoom in at like 700% if I feel it's gonna help me tell a story or make my video more dynamic. But anyway, let's get into the edit and you'll see what I mean. Okay, so what we're gonna do is go through this sequence uh, chronologically. So I should just mention first though that um, the top layer here is actually an exported clip of this sequence, just so that when I go through it and there's a lot of effects, uh, we won't experience any lagging or anything like that. So it may, uh, it'll be a lot more enjoyable for you guys. Uh, this is an adjustment layer with a bunch of LUTs and stuff that I'll go through um, as well. There's a lot of overlays that I'll explain a bit later. But uh, if we go to the footage itself, the first clip is actually uh, exposing my lies because this is the only clip that is not a phone clip from, from my sister. This is actually an Instagram reel. 
uh, shot by uh, Mags, who's um, a videographer from Montreal. Shout out to Mags. She's super good. Um, basically, my sister just screen grabbed it because, um, yeah, she, she liked it. She sent it to me, so I included it in there. But as you can see, I uh, scaled it up to 375%. So straight from the start, you can see that I'm not afraid to play with scale. But I should mention, though, that my sequence is in 4K. So all these clips uh, are in 1080p or, or less. So I could have made a 1080p sequence, but I chose to make it 4K because ultimately I'm putting this on YouTube and all my sh my footage on YouTube is in 4K. All my videos are in 4K, in 4K, so I decided to just keep going that way. But as I said, image quality is not a concern for me. It's all about uh, content, story, intensity. So from that clip, we go through three clips back to back to back of dunks. Um, obviously, I go for speed. It's just the dunk itself, bang, bang, bang. And I also added these little glitches in between and made sure that the last dunk is on the beat drop. So obviously that big beat drop with the biggest dunk as well with all the, the kids around jumping at the same time. It's all about intensity in that moment. It's all about building up. And if you're uh, curious, all these glitches, um, they come from uh, Motion Array. So I'm subscribed to Motion Array and I have a, a link in the description. So I go there to find all my overlays, all my glitch effects, my shake effects. You'll see a lot of those as well throughout the video. Well, you've seen it already. So if you go in Motion Array and say uh, shake presets, And boom, you'll see a bunch of options that go Premiere Pro because that's what I use. And here you get a bunch of different uh, options that you can download and test. So through time, I've downloaded a, a few of those. And the same with my overlays that I'll explain a bit later how, how I use them. But um, they're all sort of film grain and film burns. So if we search for, let's say, film grain... Uh, yeah, so you see there's a bunch, uh, just stock video will do. And yeah, there's a bunch of options. They're all overlays that you can download and then play with the opacity to get them the way you like. So you see, this is one that I know I have. I'm pretty sure I have this one as well. So yeah, the Motion Array is a great place that I use all the time for this type of stuff. Uh, the pricing is pretty good, I think, because it's basically if you get the annual uh, plan it's about $200 a year or as you can see here $16 a month so I personally recommend it um, this is not sponsored by Motion Array but I do have a link in the description that uh, I will get a small commission if you guys use that link so if you're interested if you want to have the same effects in your videos that you see in mine that's where i got all of them so you can definitely uh, use my link it'll help me you'll be happy everybody wins anyway let's get back to the video so yeah we've got glitches here and as i said all of this is scaled up and what i do as well is as you can see there's keyframes here because a lot of these shots, you'll see a bit of, of, of camera movement. There's a, a small, a slow push in in most of these shots. These are all done by keyframe. So I basically, once I've decided the, you know, once my shot is there and I know I'm going to use it, I put keyframes, uh, position and scale keyframes at the beginning and a position and scale keyframe at the, at the end. And then I get, I do like a small sort of push in, basically scale up just a little bit, just enough to create more movement in the shot than that there was originally. Because like I said, my, my sister was just filming everything pretty, uh, pretty wide and she's definitely not doing any camera movements, any zooming, any of that. If you look at this clip, for example, the original, it's actually vertical video, um, nothing crazy. Oh, there is a bit of zoom in, but I didn't use it in the video because I was cutting way before that. Ah! 
that was a photo that I used here just because I liked to uh, I liked how it looked in it All right, so these shots, this is actually stock footage, which is again from Motion Array. Uh, I got those because of the one, two, one, two, three. I, I wanted something visually uh, interesting that again was gonna build up uh, anticipation. So I got this clip right here, um, which is obviously street lights. And in reality, it plays like, you know, it, it counts down. So I reversed it. I played it backwards so that it counts up. And these ones also from Motion Array are basically numbers. I've got numbers and letters. So um, I've used the numbers to do again, the one, two, three. Uh, and I placed them pretty big and I added uh, effects um over them i think these effects oh yeah they're zooming effects so there's always a zoom in from one number to the next basically okay this was a prime example of storytelling. You know how I say, like, don't let the facts get in the way of a great story. Um, this is a prime example of that because, OK, we get like, first of all, we get a big dunk uh, on the big beat drop again. So intensity, intensity, intensity. And then you get my nephew here, number four, shooting from the corner. And then you get a second angle of him shooting from the corner. And this was shot with, uh, I didn't do any speed ramping in this video, by the way. So the slow down bit is all done in, in, inside the phone when you film with the slow motion option. So you get the one angle from up close, the second angle with the slow motion in the middle. And then you get a third angle with the crowd in front of the camera going nuts. But the reality is that this is one shot. Uh, let me find the original clip. So this is one shot. This is a totally different shot. And this crowd is getting excited about something completely different. But I used these three clips together and I made it look like it was all one, uh, all the one play, basically. In this one, though, it is the same play. What I did is I just went from a fully zoomed in shot of him shooting and then... I cut to a much wider shot, but it's the same shot. That's why there's these little triangles here. It means that these are the same, uh, uh, this is the same clip. Um, so here, basically what it does is that when I cut to this scene, you can definitely tell that it's my nephew, number four again, and he's shooting. And then you cut to the wide shot where you see the ball going in. So. The idea be behind that is to obviously have a lot of shot variety with close up and wide and things like that, but also a lot of movement. Like, oh, you always want cuts every second, or if there is a longer shot, it needs to be a bit more interesting than just like a simple three point. Uh, this is also the same shot, but because it was getting a bit long between the steal and the dunk, I used the camera movement, uh, I basically cut, I got the beginning and the end of that movement and uh, I cut the middle to make it go faster. So if you, if we go to the original clip just to show you what it was, um, sorry, so yeah, that was the original. And this is what I did with it. All right, so here there's also a lot to debunk. So, okay, he makes a layup and he, he hit the ground pretty hard. So what I did is that I zoomed in 
Uh, you see those keyframes here. You, you, I basically zoomed in on him falling on the ground. And as he lands on the ground, I added a shake effect. And then I cut to uh, this meme that we all know. We've seen it a million times. It's a reaction because I didn't have a lot of crowd reactions. As you can imagine, my sister didn't show a lot of crowd reactions. The only one I had was the one I used before. Um, so to add a bit more reactions, obviously, if I use any other crowd reactions from other games that I have, it's going to look very different, different gym, different crowd, uh, different camera. It's not going to work. So I decided to go with something that everybody is going to recognize that is, you know, it's not meant to be there, but it still works because it's it's a meme. So we used to see it as a reaction to something, especially on YouTube and social media. So it, it and the quality is also very similar because it's a low quality clip. I had to blow it up to 600 percent to fill the screen. So, yeah, I just think it works and it adds again variety, storytelling, all these things. All right, so what I did here is because the music says one, two, three, I decided to go with one, two, three, three point shots, uh, back to back to back. Very simple. One, two, three. Say and then again, same uh, as the meme before. This time I went with a KD reaction. Uh, a lot of you guys probably seen this video if you're into basketball. It's when, um, I forgot his name, but this guy's going to do a crazy dunk. He has to be in the dunk contest and look at Kevin. So yeah, this is Kevin Durant's reaction. Uh, we've all seen it. So I used it in there again to just add a bit of variety and a lot of storytelling elements. Big dunk. Same as before, I started this three point sequence with a close up of my, well, not really a close up, but it is a close up if you consider what the shot was originally. So yeah, um, uh, I zoomed into this shot, then went back to the original size to see the ball go in. But then at the end, I zoomed in on the basket again, just to add a lot of movement. Yeah, I want the video to feel as dynamic as a basketball game, basically. So this is why all this movement is there all the time. <laughs> Same thing here again. And then another like quote unquote meme reaction. This one is Shaq from the dunk contest from, I don't know, I think it was 2000 when, was when Vince Carter uh, won. So yeah. So yeah, and then a few layups and then we finish with the words, nobody's safe. Uh, which I actually had to, to type because uh, if you go into my nest sequence, I had to use these letters I was telling you about. So if I uh, yeah undo them, you'll see I had to go letter by letter and make the words myself. It was just two words. So, you know, it's not that bad. But um, uh, yeah, so that's how I finished it. Uh, I thought it was a good, a good way to finish since the song says nobody's safe uh, a few times uh, uh, during the hype reel. And yeah, overall, that's pretty much it. Like I said, all the red stuff that you see here are all either shake effects or glitch effects, things like that. Some of them came with audio as well. Um, otherwise, all the blue audio is the original audio from those clips. And the green here are some sound effects that I added uh, because I wanted dunks and shots and, and things like that to have a maximum impact so i added sound effects for my sound effects pack uh, if you don't know uh, i do have a, a sound effects pack and a lot pack available on my website beyondthegame.tv there's links in the description obviously i didn't put one there because there was one in the original see i had a traffic there dunk well, that one wasn't great, but with the music, it works. That was better. Uh, nothing there, because I think, yeah, the music was pretty intense. Um, 
Yeah. So just like that, it sounds a bit silly, but with everything else. Otherwise, uh, with these things here, the film burn leaks, um, the, I use the same one the whole way through. Uh, I think, yeah, every second one is played backwards, but it's all the same one. And um, all I did is with the blending mode, I used the color dodge blending mode because I played with the scale of these clips so much, the quality is, you know, technically atrocious so i wanted to make the most of it and make it look as grungy as you know broken burnt all these things uh, as much as possible i wanted to make it look like it was more on purpose than by default because it's phone footage so yeah for those reasons i went with color dodge and with a 75 percent opacity um, if i was using my my camera my sony fx3 uh, I would have gone way lower with the opacity, but in this case, I thought it was important to really see the burn film and the scratches and the glitches and all these things. Um, on top of that, I put an adjustment layer, which uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna go through all the settings inside each of those things. Like I played with the highlights, the shadows. I think I added a bit of, um, uh not in this one but in one of them anyway i added some faded film uh but yeah ultimately uh these are LUTs again from my website um if I, oh no it's not gonna change anything because the top layer is on which is the video but yeah now if i turn them off you'll see the difference so basically you've got my msg LUT first which is meant to uh be perfect for uh, basketball arenas uh, with big lights and, and big colors and all that stuff. It's good anywhere, really, but I like it for, for those uh, situations. And I use it a lot, to be honest. It's usually a base that I put there. And then if I want a bit more of a film look, I'll add X Games on top because it's a bit more of a grungy style. And then in this case, because I wanted I wanted it even grungier. I added the uh, 30 for 30 on top. Um, yeah, it doesn't really uh, make that much of a difference when you look at this clip in particular. Uh, probably should have shown you with this one. It's probably uh, a better look. So yeah, this is with MSG added. This is with X Games and then uh, 30 for 30. And again, the difference doesn't look that crazy because I go very subtle. I think MSG, I was at 40. Uh, yeah, 40 intensity. Uh, and the other two, I think I'm like at 25 or something like that. So yeah, 25 and uh, 30. So very conservative, but uh, less is more, I think, with LUTs, especially when you're dealing with phone footage. Uh, there's already a lot of contrast, so if you, you play too much with the colors and the shadows and all these things, uh, it becomes very messy very quickly. Nobody's safe. Play it once, eh? Nobody's safe. For all time's sake. Nobody's safe. All right, so the main thing to remember here is that a hype video is much more about things like story and energy and powerfulness than it is about image quality. So stop using your beginner's camera or your phone as an excuse and start embracing your own creativity. And if you're not sure where to start when it comes to finding ideas, 
Just click on the video on your screen right now and I'll see you guys there.